Hello and welcome to another of our short video tutorials relating to temperature metrology. And we're asking the question, why use an SPRT or standard platinum resistance thermometer? Let's start with the IPRT, the industrial platinum resistance thermometer. People call them PRTs, resistance thermometers, RTDs, PT100s. Strictly speaking, this is an RTD a resistance temperature detector and that's located usually at the tip of the thermometer and PT100 is the most common type of RTD. But here's a complete thermometer. These devices are very useful. The tolerance uh, is the tolerances are specified in EN60751 and they're about 0.1 degrees C at 0 degrees C thereabouts. But if we calibrate a thermometer like this we can get lower calibration uncertainties than the tolerances alone. At 0 degrees C, we can get an uncertainty for the best types of about 0 0.01 degrees C. At 650 degrees C for a higher temperature model, the uncertainty for the best thermometers is about 0 0.04 to 0 0.05. These devices are relatively inexpensive, relatively easy to handle, and for many people make ideal reference probes. But what if we want to measure to a lower calibration uncertainty? What if we want to measure to a few thousandths of a degree C? Well, it's then we need to switch to the standard platinum resistance thermometer. So here we have a quartz sheafed standard platinum resistance thermometer. This model can be used from minus 200 to 660 degrees C. And with appropriate calibration, the uncertainty can be just a few thousands of a degree C. And over narrow ranges close to zero, we can have uncertainties smaller than the thousands of a degree C. The coil at the end here is very different. Uh, this coil is open, the wire is free to expand and to contract. The wire used in an SPRT is higher purity than an industrial thermometer. And that makes these devices very prone to be damaged. They need to be handled very carefully. So with vibration, uh, with, with knocking or dropping an SPRT, the calibration will shift. You can use metal sheathed SPRTs, but inside the construction is just as fragile as the quartz glass ones. And with a metal sheathed SPRT, more heat will flow along the stem, giving a larger immersion error uh, compared to a quartz SPRT. We always recommend quartz SPRTs at Isotech. So, with an SPRT like this, we can't simply obtain a thermometer with calibration and expect to use it for a year with no checks in between. SPRTs need to be checked regularly at the water triple point. We have a separate video about that. SPRTs need to be used with the probate instruments. With a bench thermometer, the uncertainty of those is maybe 3 to 5 millikelvins at best. So if we want to measure smaller than that, we would need to use a ratio bridge. And for the best measurements, we'd use a ratio bridge and compare the SPRT to a known reference resistor. So with SPRTs, it's important to plan from the beginning that they need to be checked regularly with water triple point cells and the instruments being used to measure the SPRT are appropriate to get the low uncertainty. And what we'd always point out at Isotech is that when you're using an SPRT, it's really important to consider the application. SPRTs need good immersion depth, and if you can't immerse the thermometer deeply enough, it's not the thermometer to use. And these devices are very fragile. They're not suitable for use in, in, in industry, in portable. They really belong in the calibration lab, where they can be handled very carefully. Whilst it's got the lowest uncertainty of, of any resistance thermometer, that doesn't necessarily make it the best thermometer for all applications. It's really important to consider the application. And at Isotech, we're always able to give advice and consultancy around that. And so, as a true standard, the SPRT is the lowest uncertainty. But that doesn't always make it the best choice for all applications. At Isotech, we're available to give guidance and consultancy 
on the best thermometers to use for different applications. So for further information, perhaps a good starting point is our white paper, Why Use an SPRT, and the link details are below. There's also a lot of information on the website about the equipment we've spoken of and technical articles. So thank you very much for watching the video. We hope you found it useful and be sure to subscribe and like to keep up to date with new videos.